Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and in today's video I will be talking to you about how to get an Australian working holiday visa and basically the process of getting one. As some you know me and my girlfriend Daisy are actually going to Australia on a working holiday visa in actually 10 days time so it's coming out really quickly so I thought what better time to do it now uh, so I can help you guys out and if you're looking to do one then you can know what to expect. Also if you like this video don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up, uh, subscribe if you want if you haven't already and leave your comments and questions below and I'll be sure to answer them so let's get this started. So a working holiday visa costs around $390 so in the UK that is roughly about £235. Obviously it depends on the exchange rate but it's roughly about £235. Previously a couple of years ago or actually last year uh, before January 2017 it was $440 so they have reduced the price by about roughly about $50 so you can save yourself some more money there. You can apply for one if you are aged between 18 and 35 years of age with no dependent children. It used to be 31, 18 to 31, uh, but again, as of January 2017, they've upped the age to 35 years of age. You must not have any criminal convictions and you must be in good health with no serious diseases or illnesses. Pretty standard stuff, really. The Australian government say you will need about $5,000 or the equivalent of $5,000 uh, to enter the country. I would definitely recommend taking more than that purely because Australia is a very expensive country. The more you have, the better your time's going to be. I wouldn't take anything less than that purely because you run the risk of getting stuck the customs and they can and they will ask you for proof if you do proof of your funds and if you don't have enough then they are in their legal right to refuse to enter into the country and obviously you planned all of this you don't want that to happen so I'd highly recommend taking as much as you can to fund your travels and lastly a, a work and holiday visa roughly takes about four weeks to be granted although everyone I know and everyone I've spoken to including mine and my girlfriends it only took about 48 hours so leave yourself plenty of time just in case but it is done pretty quickly so if you can say yes to all of the above you should have no problems to be granted a work and holiday visa and if you do get granted one you have to remember you have to use it within 12 months otherwise your visa will be expired so that's 12 months of the acceptance date uh, you have to enter the country. This is because if you don't enter it within that time, your visa will be invalid and you won't be able to be granted another one. Also, you can only get one in your lifetime, uh, up to 35 years of age. So if you miss this opportunity, you can't get another one. You can also enter and leave the country as often or as little as you like, depending on what you want to do. So if you want to go traveling to New Zealand, to Fiji, to, uh, not to Australia, you're in Australia. If you want to go to New Zealand, to Fiji, to, Asia to Singapore wherever you want to go you can do that and you can return back to Australia and carry on working in Australia within that 12 month period. Your work and holiday visa will entitle you to work for 12 months legally in Australia although if you work for I believe I believe it's 88 days you can be granted uh, your second year visa. This is specified work only and I will leave a description a link in the description below uh, so you will know what work classifies as that to make sure that you will be entitled to one. One thing I will say is when you leave your current job um, in Australia, get your employer to sign off your card for you to prove that you have worked the days that you have worked there. Otherwise, it's your word against them and they'll go for them because you will not have any proof of the days you have worked in Australia. Before going to Australia, I would highly recommend that you get a Australian tax file number and a Australian bank account set up beforehand. These are so easy to do. I am with Westpac, well, me and my girlfriend are with Westpac, the bank. Uh, really quick and easy, all set up, just Google it. And also a tax file number, you'll need that so you can actually work in Australia in your time there. Also, when you get there, I'd get an Australian SIM card set up purely because it will cost you loads and loads of money if you use your own provider uh, out in Australia so I definitely recommend just getting an Australian SIM card they do 30 day rolling contracts so every 30 days you pay X amount and you can use your phone in Australia contact whoever you need to obviously in Australia it's not poor it's got a very good system so it's got loads of Wi-Fi everywhere so you can connect to your Wi-Fi FaceTime Skype whatever you need to do when you're connected to Wi-Fi do not go to Australia without any travel insurance. Get this done 
you can do it the day before you go if you really have to but get it done at least about a week um, in advance get your travel insurance sorted I just went on go compare travel insurance had a look at all of them and got the best one for me I think we are currently with boots uh, platinum one I think that was the best one that I saw but obviously do it to how you want it so but I'd highly recommend get that before you go do not go there without traveling to Australia if you're a bit like me and Daisy we actually went to SDA travel and they sorted it all for us they were really really good they sorted everything from us from our bank account to our visa to our tax file number it's all getting sorted for us uh, so it's really really easy to do you do pay a little bit extra but it depends on what you want depends on what you want to do whether you want to pay a little bit extra and have no stress or whether you want to do it all yourself and have a little bit more freedom in what you're doing and knowing what you're doing rather than just getting someone else to do it. It's down to you but I would highly recommend SDA Travel. Just go on their website again their link will be in the description below. Just go on their website and click on travel, uh, work abroad, travel Australia or wherever you want to go. Um, obviously if you're watching this it will be all for Australia so I recommend clicking on the Australia one but they get it all sorted for you. They're super quick, super helpful as well so you can do that or if you do want to do it on your own I'd recommend writing down a list of everything that I've just gone through anything else which you think you might need uh, write it down on list and when you've done each one I'll just tick it off simply so then you can't get lost and you can't forget anything whatsoever that would be how I done it if I had done it on my own so that's a working holiday visa pretty much summed up in Australia I believe I've got everything if I have forgotten anything or you think that there may be other things which I've missed or whatever there is leave a comment in the section below and I'll be sure to add that in um, I will be doing loads more videos uh, hints tips etc and my traveling videos when I'm out in Australia and what to expect when you arrive where the best jobs are etc etc so if you do want to keep, uh, keep up to date with all of that and keep up to date with my travels then be sure to hit that subscribe button we'll just be down below somewhere there and I hope to see you out there and if you are going to get a working holiday visa I wish you the best of luck and yeah who knows I might even see you out there so leave your comments in the section below any questions leave them and I'll be sure to answer any questions which you have for a Australian working holiday visa so thank you very much guys don't forget to subscribe bye